Hello. Uh, my name is Sean Purcell and this is my first treasure video. So I know like many of you, when they found the Forest Fen treasure, I was very disappointed. I had spent uh, two summers looking for it at Yellowstone with my buddy Franz. We were very excited. Uh, some of the best times of our lives camping out in uh, Island Park, Idaho. You know, but um, as you know, we're all quarantined right now and um, I needed something to pass the time and I find treasure hunting to be a engaging intellectual activity, right? So I read around, uh, there's a new treasure out by uh, Natalie Nelson called The Parish Treasure, which uh, seems very, very interesting and I will definitely spend some time on that. Uh, but first I actually uh, took some interest in the Fandango Treasure. Uh, now, the Fandango treasure is a book-based treasure hunt, book-based armchair treasure hunt. Um, it has a $10,000 prize. Um, basically, what you have to do to discover this treasure is find a key, uh, presumptuously a golden key that's been placed somewhere on Mount Desert Island in Maine. Uh, the rules for this treasure hunt were very simple. Don't break the law. Um, it's somewhere on public land. Um, though they don't specifically talk about what it is, there are a lot of clues and allusions to the fact that it's probably a key of some sort. And uh, according to the publishers of, or the authors, uh, that key can be redeemed for $10,000 or uh, maybe other prizes. I'm not exactly sure. So, um, Mount Desert Island is really beautiful. It's the home of Acadia National Park and Bar Harbor. Uh, some of the coolest places in the country to visit. Uh, and that's a big part of why I want to go there to look for this treasure. I live in New Jersey, and uh, it's a lot closer than Yellowstone or anywhere in the Rocky Mountains. So uh, before I get into the treasure board, I kind of just want to go over how the Fandango treasure works and how the book works. So there's uh, 16 images like this. Uh, throughout the book. Uh, this is a very busy image. Uh, you see multiple images occur throughout the piece, like uh, different keys hidden in every picture. Um, and that's important because the book is actually called The Key to the Wind. And um, basically the premise of the book is that a key is given from King Neptune to the goddess of the wind as a trinket of his love. But um, on its way to the goddess of the wind, Fandango, a sly fox, intercepts the key and tries to keep it for himself. Um, and this is explained in the narrative. But as he tries to keep it in, to himself, uh, trying to leave Mount Desert Island, he's intercepted by King Neptune and told that it's now his job to deliver to the key. Uh, but he doesn't give him any specifics about where to deliver the key. All he says is that he has to do it by tomorrow. Now, one of the interesting things to um, talk about is the characterization of this Fandango Fox. Uh, the name, I think a lot of us have come to associate that name with the app or the, the company that sells movie tickets or provides movie times. Uh, one of the things I found most interesting about this treasure, though, is, is uh, basically that it went dead shortly after the publication of the book, meaning that the authors didn't show any follow-up interest in it. And um, the fact that it ends this year is very interesting, too, because there's only six months left, so I kind of wish that I got into it a little earlier. But at the same time, um, it's not super engaging after the initial onset because there's no interaction or engagement. Uh, as I mentioned, Natalie Nelson has this great parish treasure. She's very interactive. We all know Forrest Fenn was very interactive with people who were sending him emails. Obviously, he had a lot more people uh, looking for his treasure than a lot of these other smaller armchair treasures, but uh, they're also very interesting. I just want to go over what's on these pages real quick. I mean, you're going to see more up on the board there, and I got some good examples, and I also have a map of Mount Desert Island here. But what we want to look at, it, in addition to the images on the page, we got uh, words written around all four sides of the page. Um, this one says, hidden away, a gift for the wind, a keepsake, measure of gold. You'll notice some letters are in red throughout, like for example, the K here. But throughout the piece, there are also letters that are in blue. Uh, 
The goal of this treasure is to uncover a hidden master riddle within the piece. And then once you discern or solve the master riddle, you have to solve the master riddle. And uh, that will supposedly take you to the location where the key is located. So I mentioned this master riddle. Now this whole idea of the master riddle is a little confusing because the book is so rich with words and images. So it's hard to believe that all of the clues and the narrative and all of the images um, don't mean anything without the master riddle. So as I mentioned, there were different letters around each page in the colors red and blue. You'll notice on these words, these are indicated red here, but these are the words that are spelled out using those loose letters from throughout the book, right? So we have island, Neptune, key, chance, reflection, north, dreams, map, fire, destiny, wisdom, mountain, harbor, future, and love. At the bottom here, you'll see it says Pace 40 South. If you take all the blue letters and put them in order, it spells out Pace 40 South with one minor exception. The C and the E that appear in echo would have to be reversed to spell out Pace 40 South. So next to that, we have the index cards here with all of the phrasing from around the pages. This is just an interesting way of organizing information. And here, like, on some pages, you'll have, like, Roman numerals. And I'm going to get into the pages in a, little, in a little bit. But you also have the narrative here. Now, I think there's a few important things to comment on about the narrative. I want to call your attention right here to this picture of a coyote that appears on page 37. Um, it appears without any text on that page, which suggests to me that that page is an important placeholder for something. Uh, not sure what exactly. So it's hard to tell if this is the master riddle or if these words need to be rearranged to discern the master riddle. Uh, quite frankly, this is sort of a cliffhanger for a lot of searchers. It seems extraneously laborious to have the clue be so separate. But that brings me to another point. What if it's not so separate? So you'll see, I mentioned the coyote, but you'll see other images like the otter here. And there was a place called Otter Creek. That is uh, pretty popular in the Mount Desert Island. I want to take you guys over here real quick. So this is one of the most stark images in the whole thing. Uh, you'll see a license plate here that says 131491. If you use a letter substitution cipher that spells Acadia, which I believe that that location is right here. And uh, throughout you'll see different signs in different colors with different uh, locations and places that Fandango either went or could go. Um, you'll notice places like Montreal or Nepal are uh, either red herrings or um, reference places that are not either nearby or necessarily associated. Uh, one of the most interesting things I found about this picture is that Duck Cove does not seem to be only nine miles as Duck Cove is somewhere down here. But um, given the distance between this sign and some of these locations such as Bar Harbor and Otter Creek. I've uh, deduced that that picture is somewhere around here in the upper brim of the Acadia Park ring. So this picture is actually pretty important too, but I just want to get to the other pictures very quickly. So we got these here. So these are some of the pages from the book. Uh, you saw the very busy page. Uh, this is a page of an Presumably old man uh, sitting. Um, I'm going to show you guys a close-up of that page. You'll see here the old man with the bald head. He has whales on his things. He obviously lives in a big estate. Uh, this is one of the places that Fandango crosses uh, to get to. 
Basically, he dropped the key at one of the places he had been. So you have a few interesting images here. You have the Down East uh, newspaper here. There's a number cipher in there, which number ciphers appear throughout the visual images a few times. Um, there are also letter ciphers in some places. You have the letters SPF up here, a key symbol perhaps, and the state flag of Maine. And it's one of four or the last of four, so we don't actually know. So then we have another image like this one over here uh, where Fandango is and you got a, a, a picture. Uh, it says Nikon on top and it's presumably a camera lens, so that's probably also a clue. And um, the uh, Winnebago actually has Texas plates on it. And there's various numbers and things around it. So these are all different curios about the treasure because these images are very, very... It. So as for sort of like the last part of this too, we have a map of Mount Desert Island. We have a uh, map from the book of Mount Desert Island that indicates some points of interest, perhaps. Um, as you can tell from this map, most of it is Acadia National Park. These five blue dots on there are places that I know Fandango went. So in the early part of the narrative, he makes his way through here and he eventually meets up with some fairies who attempt to steal the key from him, presumably in this area. Um, I'm going up there this Sunday, it's Friday now, to get on the ground and take a look. Um, the armchair part of the treasure hunting is very interesting. But... Uh, but a lot of the real fun is being on the ground. So I hope you guys like the treasure board. Um, in addition to doing the board, I actually do a treasure journal also. In this particular one, I've uh, pasted pictures of the images where I can make notes on. You'll see uh, some more detailed uh, politician, governor's mansion maybe. Uh, and here's one of those number ciphers that I mentioned. That's how the numbers appear. Uh, you'll notice blank spaces and then the uh, early part of the journal is just different questions I might have. I know this treasure is uh, based on the masquerade armchair treasure of the 1970s. So it's pretty interesting and um, Just some stuff I took down from um, Mysterious writings any other websites I could find I'm looking to post the next video from the field in Maine where I will be testing out a lot of my new gear I hope you enjoyed this video, and I would appreciate any feedback or any conversation or comments. Please feel free to reach out.